While the use of ozone gas for medicinal purposes has been around for well over a century, the confusion and misinformation regarding the subject has led to much controversy. If you're a medical provider or prospective patient that would like to learn more about ozone to see if it's right for you or your clinic, then you're in the right place. In this video, we'll talk about what ozone is, how it works in the body, its potential benefits and risks, and how treatments with medical ozone are conducted. I'm Jason Seitz, paramedic RN. Welcome to Guardian MD. The presence of ozone was first discovered in 1785 by Dutch physicist Martinus van Marum. He noticed that in his lab, near machines that generated electrostatic fields, he smelled a unique odor. This odor would soon be identified as ozone, a molecule made up of three oxygen atoms. The reason Martinus van Marum noticed this around electrostatic fields is that in order for ozone to be created, oxygen molecules, which are made up of two oxygen atoms, have to be exposed to high energy sources that split them into individual oxygen atoms. Atomic oxygen on its own is highly reactive and will quickly bind to existing O2 molecules, creating O3, the ozone molecule. That's right, it all started with a strange smell. It wouldn't be until decades later that the ozone odor could be synthesized, and even later when it was discovered that the molecule could be used therapeutically. The process of creating ozone requiring high energy is likely familiar to you in regards to the creation of the ozone layer around the Earth, where high energy UV rays from the sun break up atmospheric oxygen, which binds to itself and creates a layer of ozone. In the late 1800s, it was discovered that ozone works as a powerful antimicrobial agent, killing pathogenic cells. Ozone kills cells in the body by starting a process that creates free radicals, namely peroxides, that are damaging to cells. You're probably familiar with free radicals as something we do our best to remove from our bodies through the consumption of sources of antioxidants like vitamin C and E. Antioxidants are molecules that give up their electrons to change free radicals into safer molecules. Ozone does the opposite. It gives up its extra oxygen atoms, starting a process that creates free radicals that harm cells. Now you may be thinking, why would I introduce something to my body that harms cells? Sure, it could destroy bacterial, viral, or even cancerous cells, but wouldn't this hurt my healthy cells too? This is really the crux of what makes medical ozone sometimes controversial and misunderstood. We at Guardian are educators, not researchers or scientists, and want to be clear that there are a lot of opinions on this matter, and encourage you to do your own research for yourself and for your patients. While we understand the skepticism of some, we also have seen and heard many examples of ozone therapy benefiting others greatly when nothing else could. In medicine, new science uncovers new truths daily. More and more studies on ozone are conducted each year, and we look forward to a day when the results of these studies settle the matter once and for all. But in the meantime, we'll do our best to explain the concept as to why ozone therapy is considered by some to be an effective disease-fighting tool. Because its molecule is made up of three oxygen atoms, ozone has extra electrons and is negatively charged. By giving away its electrons, a process called oxidizing, it changes other molecules by binding to them in a process called reduction. This process can create harmful free radicals like lipid peroxides. These peroxides then break down the cell membrane of pathogens, causing them to lose integrity and die. This process is often referred to as putting the body through acute oxidative stress. So oxidative stress kills pathogenic cells, but how do we stop this process from occurring in our healthy cells? The reason ozone is believed to not harm healthy cells is that these cells have antioxidant enzymes, like catalase, that support their defense. So if we can encourage healthy cell defense by balancing the body's antioxidants, the introduction of ozone as a prooxidant should only harm pathogenic cells that don't have this defensive support. Oxidative stress is believed to be rapidly corrected by the antioxidant system in our body while killing disease cells. Another considered benefit of ozone is that once it has donated its extra electrons, we're left with oxygen, an essential molecule involved in the process of synthesizing energy in our body. The Krebs cycle, a part of cellular respiration, uses oxygen to break down nutrients to create energy in the form of adenosine triphosphate, or ATP. Ozone's oxidation provides extra oxygen to this important process, increasing cellular respiration, energy production, and promoting health. 
This is a complicated process to understand, but simply put, ozone has the potential to start a process that creates free radicals that harm disease cells and do minimal damage to healthy cells. And it introduces more oxygen to healthy cells to promote their function. More research is being conducted every day to definitively prove that this process is safe and effective. We understand that this is a lot of information and encourage you to take your time to review it and conduct further research regarding ozone therapy to find out if it's right for you or your patients. The process of receiving ozone therapy varies. While the inhalation of ozone gas directly can be toxic to your lungs, you can introduce your body to ozone safely in many ways, including applying it to your skin under a protective covering, dissolving small amounts of ozone gas into oil or water and ingesting it, and mixing it with your blood through an IV called autohemotherapy. Autohemotherapy is often the preferred way of administration of ozone and consists of drawing the patient's blood into an IV bag, mixing that blood with saline and a small amount of heparin to prevent clotting, and adding ozone gas to the bag to bind to the blood. This mixture of ozone, blood, and fluid is then reinfused into the patient's vein where it can take effect. Whichever method you and your provider choose to administer ozone therapy, you'll need to safely create the ozone using an approved, regulated ozone generator, subject to strict quality and safety operational standards. These machines use oxygen from an oxygen bottle and generate electrical currents to create ozone that can be drawn up in a syringe that can then be injected into blood or fluid. They are closed systems to prevent any ozone from escaping that could harm the patient's or provider's lungs. It's also essential that your provider is using compliant standard operating procedures and defined protocols that have been reviewed by a medical director who's familiar with the administration of ozone. Medical directors are required for non-physician providers to deliver compliant and legal care. If your client is in need of a medical director or physician collaborator, please visit guardianmd.com for more information. People with certain conditions, especially involving the blood, should avoid ozone therapy. These include, but are not limited to, patients with thrombocytopenia, blood coagulation failure, bleeding organs, hemorrhagic strokes, recent MIs, active seizures, intoxication from alcohol, G6PD deficiency, and a history of ozone intolerance or allergy. As always, when administering ozone, ensure that you have the proper training and knowledge base. Discuss your treatment plans with your patients, walk them through the process, record their consent, and deliver safe and appropriate care according to your state guidelines. If you need help navigating these processes, that's why Guardian MD exists. We can connect you to a medical director or physician collaborator, provide example SOPs, and refer you to legal sources to ensure your practice is operating within compliance. Check out what we're doing at guardianmd.com and help us in our mission in ensuring every provider can have a practice. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and follow. We'll see you next time.